wanted to preface this video with possibly the most important point. If there's one thing you take away from this video, I want this to be it. Previously, I would buy Ubisoft games with an intent to critique them, to analyse them, to argue an opinion, whether that was the way they were diluting the industry with their design philosophy, or whether it was with regards to their predatory microtransactions. Me buying Assassin's Creed Odyssey and making Odyssey Broke Me did far more than not buying Odyssey ever could have done. However, that critique begins to lose value when I do it over and over again. I can't keep bringing up the same points and saying the same things. It gets to a point where you can no longer really justify the reason I continue to buy these games. And Ubisoft really have crossed that line for me. I really do wish I could take back my purchase of Valhalla. I'm sure there's a lot of people that do as well. But I feel that really all we can focus on now is how we move forward. And for me, that is not buying another product from Ubisoft until they take responsibility and they are held accountable for their actions. This video goes into a ton of different issues within Ubisoft and a bunch of things that I'm very passionate about. But the most important one is, of course, the sexual misconduct within Ubisoft. There was another investigation very recently that came out stating that essentially there have been no changes, despite people like Ashraf Ismail, Sergei Hascott, Esco Blades being let go from the company, that's because they're high profile, they're in the public eye, people know who they are. The ones that people don't know about have just been shifted around within Ubisoft, and there's no real change to be seen. The members of HR that covered up a lot of these things are still in their positions, and I cannot continue to support this company, even if it's to critique their games, even if it's to make a hit piece on one of their video games. I, I can't continue giving them my money, and that's really where I stand with it. From this point on, I won't even consider purchasing a Ubisoft product until I see genuine change within the company, until I see restructuring, until we understand what they're doing to make it safer for people. And of course, the man at the top, Eve Gima, has to go. Will he? Who knows? but he fucking needs to. This video covers a variety of topics, ranging from incredibly serious to minor and you might even say trivial, but I wanted to cover all of the things that I feel I'm passionate about, where they're harming the industry, where they're harming the consumer, and where they're harming their own employees. My stance is to no longer buy products from Ubisoft, and if there's one thing that you take away from this video, I hope it's that you no longer do as well. <laughs> I've been sitting on all this for a while now. I felt it had to be part of my big Valhalla critique, but it's a different topic entirely. It deserves its own video, and the more things happen and the situation evolves, the more I want desperately to talk about it. Let's start by laying out the cards here. Why am I even making this video? Why do I continue to talk about and criticize Ubisoft? Plenty of people tell me, just don't play their games. And that would be great advice if I were just a work colleague or someone from school, someone who plays these games as a pastime. I think, you know what, you're completely right. I should focus on my career at this paper production firm, make something of myself, maybe take my wife out to dinner. I've not spoken to her and the kids in five years as I've been too caught up with the downfall of Assassin's Creed. But I work in this industry. I have a platform to speak. I'm not the mate you're shooting the breeze with at the water cooler on your 15 minute work break who won't shut up about Assassin's Creed being bad now. So the advice of just don't play the games doesn't really follow. Even if I don't play the games, I'm still going to talk about these things. And I'm not shaming those who don't speak up or would rather just not engage, but for me personally in what I want to do, to simply ignore this would be irresponsible and ignorant. Someone has to be the person who points out how fucked up these business practices are, how games as a medium is slowly becoming watered down because of the way companies like Ubisoft produce their games. The issues are bigger than Assassin's Creed not being Assassin's Creed anymore. There was a clip from the streamer Asmongold circulating recently on social media, talking towards Assassin's Creed, in which he discusses the fact that within the industry there are companies, and he uses Assassin's Creed as an example, that are watering down video game, making it so that they appeal to the masses and in the process lose their entire identity. You have so many of these gaming companies and these gaming, uh, th these gaming like groups that are making these decisions based off of uh, money. It it's very transparently money. You, you have something like Assassin's Creed. And so Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a great example of this. How the fuck 
are you a how the fuck are you an assassin whenever you're a viking like i'm sorry but these two things don't really fit together like yes obviously in, in like you know like history to some degree this was the case but it just doesn't really like you watch the the trailer for assassin's creed and you think to yourself like when do you think assassin in that trailer whenever they're on the massive battlefield and the guy's cutting off basically the fucking version of the english is the mountain you know he's like cutting him up no like it's just bullshit and like so the games nowadays are being watered down and i want to say this right i don't want assassin's creed valhalla to appeal to me because i don't like stealth games and assassin games so if assassin's creed appeals to me that means it is no longer assassin's creed and i think that it's good that there are games that I don't like and other people do like. Does that make sense? Because that means that each game is being developed and made for a different person. And they're not being watered down to have a minimal milk toast mass appeal. And I think that's what's happened. And this is one of the many, many issues that plague Ubisoft's game titles, but also the company itself. When things are watered down, it slowly kills the medium, a medium which I adore. It's my favorite, far above television or film or books. Video games are my thing and I want to protect them from losing their individuality. People will always misunderstand why it bothers me and why I go on about this. It simply comes down to passion. I write about games, I stream games, I play games because I utterly adore the medium that is video games. I just want the best for it. And of course, it goes deeper, beyond anything related to Assassin's Creed. The problems with Ubisoft are deep-rooted problems and ones I aim to tackle head-on in this video. What started all of this for me, or at least sparked my want to make a full video, was this tweet from our boy Joraptor. He made a video covering the fact that Ubisoft is now going to be selling all of Origins and Odyssey's gear packs again in Valhalla for full price, which, by the way, is an obscene amount of money for a gear pack, usually totaling around a fifth of the full game's cost. First of all, let's forget that this is an armor set with wings and a Pegasus mount. Just try and pretend that it's not, because despite that being utterly ludicrous, it doesn't matter for what I'm talking about. Let's focus Focus on the god-awful business practices they get away with day in, day out. I am willing to say, and damn confident about it, they're the worst company in the industry. And it's not just because of this bullshit, but we'll get onto that. Other companies are held to account by their player base. I mean, look at Battlefront 2 with their loot boxes. They were absolutely destroyed by the games industry, and it was incredible to see everyone coming together for a common, righteous goal. Reddit created posts that dominated the site, YouTube channels called out bullshit, big names in the industry spoke out, and the company generally fixed their mistakes, went back on it, improved. Similar scenarios happened with Shadow of War as well. With Ubisoft, they get a free pass, and I've never understood why this is. When EA, Microsoft, and even Sony on occasion steps out of line, pulls something really dumb, they're held to account by all. Ubisoft are excused, however, time and time again, not just by hardcore fans, but by high-profile journalists. It was only a few months ago that we were pointing out the reselling of outfits dyed a different colour in the Raven Pack, or whatever it was called, being literally the Hidden One's robes dyed black with a silly hat sold for £14. Remember, dyeing outfits used to be a feature in Assassin's Creed. Now it's removed so that they can monetize it. This was taken entirely wrong by so many people, including some big names that put it down to companies have to reuse assets. Ubisoft aren't lazy, it's just how game dev works. To which I'm still utterly baffled at the mental gymnastics you have to go through to justify that. Why is it always the case with Ubisoft? And that's not even to mention that now there are more gear packs in Valhalla locked behind microtransactions than there are in the entire base game itself. The game itself has nine gear sets, if you include the St. George set from the River Raid, the Epic Drenga set from the Yule Festival, that's 11 sets you can get without spending any money. There are 12 on the store. That's absolutely insane. Someone spends $80 on your game and you're telling me there are over 100% more gear sets that are locked behind a paywall. I'm just baffled at the concept. Now people again will use the argument, you don't have to buy them, and no, you don't, you're completely right, but you have to see the way these stores shape the games they're a part of. Surely, silver is the first commodity that sold for real money. Ignore that this literally looks like the store for a mobile game your five-year-old son plays on your iPad, and notice the fact that silver in Valhalla 
isn't something you make easily. You end up spending quite a bit on basic things, resources for upgrades from your shop and the settlement and other stuff there. You come across maybe 10 to 20 silver pieces in every camp from random barrels, maybe a little bit more. They then decided to use transmog, you need to spend silver to do so. Now each time you want to do this it costs you around 50 silver. Slowly you realise you can't experiment with looks because you quickly run out of silver. No problem though, just hop onto the Helix store and grab 2,000 Helix credits for £16. You've then got a similar situation with your materials. They do take a bit of time to gather, especially if you want to max out all your gear, and so, hey, hop into the store and avoid the grind, you just have got your back. Then you've got the fact they throttled the way leveling up works in a recent update after the launch, so that the game becomes more of a grind. Again, pushing the XP boosts and time savers. There is a similar thing with Odyssey 2. The throttle works by decreasing the power gap between levels, so before you could easily tackle an area at power level 300 while being level 200, but now it's less likely. You need to up your level, and so it takes more time, time which people don't have. So that pushes time savers. It's subtle and it's minor, but it works to hinder the game overall. Don't don't get me wrong, the throttle isn't anywhere near as bad as Odyssey, Valhalla is still much more forgiving, reason being they turn the entire game into the grind, but that's by the by. Ubisoft's use of the store since Assassin's Creed 4 has slowly affected the entire philosophy of how they build their games. Not only is it scummy and predatory, it's changing the way they create games. Their focus is on filling the world with even more shit to do. Shit you check off of a list. Shit you feel you have to do to finish the game. And so you buy these maps, these time savers, because the game is simply just too big. They've taken the philosophy of The Witcher 3 and entirely warped it to fit a more lucrative design that benefits them, not the game they're making. It pacifies players and takes advantage of your time. This approach to creating games leads into what I spoke about at the very start of the video with the quote from Asmongold. Ubisoft no longer wants to create games for a specific audience. They want to appeal to as many people as they can at once, and in doing so, create these games that have no longevity to them whatsoever. Black Flag will be remembered forever. It's why a lot of people still consider it the best of the franchise, as will Assassin's Creed 2. Valhalla though? Odyssey? Syndicate? They're just another entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Just another game. There'll be another one next year, they don't matter anymore. People complained about Assassin's Creed always being the same, but yet praised these new games when they're the most watered down the series has ever been. Now, those could definitely be two different groups of people, but Assassin's Creed occupied a very nice and specific portion of the market, maybe the most mainstream and niche franchise has ever been. But thanks to people's misunderstanding of what makes the series what it is, slowly it strayed into a territory that no longer represents the point of Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed was never a historical tour, regardless of whether you thought it was or not. It wasn't. It was never about exploring the beliefs and cultures of a particular time period. It wasn't about learning about the Vikings or Spartans or ancient Egyptians. It was about assassins. The concept that they outlived the Crusades, and we could explore how the assassins and their conflict expanded and grew afterwards. The time periods were a great backdrop, but the focus was on what the assassins did in that period. This is precisely why people believe Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla are natural evolutions of the franchise, because they simply misunderstand the identity of Assassin's Creed. They believe the identity was history game, not assassin game. And of course, Ubisoft is to blame to an extent. They marketed the fuck out of the Renaissance and especially the American Revolution, realising around Black Flag that history sells like hotcakes, and they just decided that selling their game to more people was far more important than focusing on its true identity. The fans of these new games, however, are not the ones to blame. The people who never liked the old Assassin's Creeds but were always interested in the settings are not to blame. Ubisoft catered to them, and I'm sure they love that. They're happy, and they can explore the Vikings or ancient Greece unburdened by the elements that they disliked. It's just a shame that people like me who enjoyed the true core of Assassin's Creed had to be pushed aside to cater to the masses in a more basic and watered down way. And this is a problem. I have no issues with the people who love these new games being catered to, it's just sad that we had to lose a niche for it to happen. Losing these niche games that only appeal to certain people in favour of games that try to appeal to everyone. This problem is not unique to Ubisoft and it's why it's relevant to me. I love games being niche. I love games that only appeal to a select few. Games like Kingdom Come Deliverance being ultra realistic and difficult in a lot of cases. The near games being wild and unpredictable. Kingdom Hearts focusing on its insane complex stories, and the Souls games being incredibly difficult. 
They all have their own place in the market. They do what they do very well and they have their own fan bases for it. These games aren't for everyone and they shouldn't be. That's what makes them so good. When you lose this, when you demand that Nier pulls back on its antics, when you demand the Souls games have an easy mode, when you demand Kingdom Hearts make its story more simplistic, you're trying to make games that aren't made for you, made for you. And that does nothing but harm the medium, nothing but water down the games so that anyone can access them. There are plenty of franchises that I've tried to get into that just aren't for me. Metal Gear Solid is one of them, and that's great. The fact that I can't get into it means that someone else out there adores it. It does everything they want from a game, and I'm so happy for that. It means the medium is still alive. It means there are games that do what they want for people who want to play those games and find them interesting. And for people that don't, they don't have to play them. When you start listening to people who don't like your games for advice on how to fix your games, you end up with issues. The reason Assassin's Creed is where it is now is because they had a niche game with a large fan base that loved what it did, and they decided they needed to make their games for people who didn't even like them to begin with. Everything I've talked about so far is nothing compared to the final point, which I don't want to necessarily recap in great detail. We had a whole podcast about this topic earlier last year, which I'll link below. Ubisoft was subject to many, many allegations of workplace harassment and abuse, as well as predatory behavior to women in and out of the company by people within Ubisoft. You know the names involved, and if you don't, I'm not here to talk about specifics, whether that's the victims or the offenders. The information is out there, our podcast being one source of that. The issue relevant to this video is how it's been handled. I'm furious, to put it quite simply, at how little the industry seems to care. It took mere months, if that, before journalists and content creators went back to praising Ubisoft for their mediocre games and excusing their business practices. Where is the pressure from the industry? Where is the communication from within Ubisoft? What the fuck is happening? There was a lot of issues to be addressed, and all of them were brushed under the rug with bullshit blog posts and edited in messages from Eve that skim over the points while hiding away from the mass public. Eve Gimo needs to fucking step down. He needs to be away from that company. Serious changes need to be made, and we have a right to know what they are. I refuse to believe that Eve had no idea what was happening. It's his company. There are talks from within that if these people brought in cash, their predatory behavior was mostly ignored because they were a benefit to the company. Maybe dealt with partially by HR, which was also corrupt as fuck, having victims take nice leisurely strolls with their abusers so that they could apologize for licking their face without consent. Either Eve knew and he covered it up because it served him to not bother, or he had no idea and is entirely incompetent and accidentally allowed his employees to be abused for decades. Either way, he's scum and I have no problem saying that, no doubt in my mind that he needs to go. This wasn't instances of a man cheating on his wife or someone getting mixed signals, it was a culture of seeing women as inferior, of using your position to prey on fans and on colleagues that were beneath you in the hierarchy of your job. This was the higher ups stopping devs from creating projects with women as protagonists because women don't sell, all while outwardly projecting this facade of equality and acceptance. So yeah, I'm angry. Whenever I talk about this topic, I get angry because it's not just games being bad or money on your mind when creating quote unquote art. It's abusing real people. It's actual social issues with real victims. Shame on the gaming industry for not sticking with this, for not pursuing this further. People are quick to make ramp videos and hit pieces when the new Fallout 76 DLC is bad or when EA puts in another loot box. Jason Schreier's ears begin to steam when someone works overtime, but when women are abuse, looked down on, and in some cases, worse, silence. Absolute fucking silence. So why is it I continue to talk about Ubisoft, to criticize them instead of just moving on? It's because nobody else is talking about this. The four pillars have been the only ones doing this for years, whether it was the downfall of Assassin's Creed, the poor handling of microtransactions and predatory business practices, or the workplace abuse and sexual harassment. We seem to be the only ones getting involved on a large scale and trying to fight back. I wanted to make this video out of a place of pure passion. Ubisoft is a company I have been involved with for so long, and despite the fact that my content is now far less focused on the more Assassin's Creed, I will always have those ties I formed to the company. This feels like my fight, the one that's most personal for me. Assassin's Creed are the games that I played as a kid. My very first growth in audience was from covering those games. The first devs I spoke to properly were from Ubisoft, and this video comes from a place of passion. I want the industry to be better. 
better. To ignore these things because certain people don't like to listen to negativity would be irresponsible of me. I want to see Ubisoft do better. I want to know what they're doing internally to combat the awful culture that was bred over the years, with an internal survey suggesting one fourth of people felt they have seen or experienced workplace misconduct across all the Ubisoft studios. That's 25%. That's 14,000 people that feel this way. That's not something to scoff at. I want to see their games appeal to specific groups of people, make Splinter Cell for the people who love stealth games, make Assassin's Creed for the people who adore social stealth and meaningful movement, make Prince of Persia for those who love platforming, make Ghost Recon for those who love squad-based shooters. Not every game needs to become the same thing, the same formula, the same light RPG. Let art be art, and let the devs create what their vision entails without watering it down to be a forgettable nothing experience. I want to see microtransactions ideally gone. Single player games that cost top dollar do not need them and definitely don't need a store on the main menu. Build games that reward the player for playing. Don't hinder them to sell time savers and other garbage. I want to see the games industry do what it does best, and I wanted to talk about this because nobody else is. It feels contained, it feels safe for them. I want them to feel pressure, whether it's for their lazy approach to video games, their predatory microtransactions, or their outright abuse. I love video games, I love the video game industry, but this shit isn't good enough, and Ubisoft have gone long enough without any repercussions. I want change, and I really hope that we see it.